war rages across the mortal realms. New alliances are formed while others lie shattered, and the dominant powers ever seek their next conquest. As these two powerful forces prepare to clash, one fact is becoming clear. The season of war has begun. This video is brought to you by the support of our channel members and the FLGS partners, Warfire Minis and X-Planet. Hello and welcome to Season of War! Tonight we are excited to bring you another game of Age of Sigmar. I am Jordan, joined by Ridge again tonight. Excited for some uh, hopefully good counter magic <laughs> wizard slaying tonight. Yes, Corn won the vote, who would have thought? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you wanted to play your Seraphon. Yeah. Got a couple of the new models on the table from, from the recent release. Obviously we've been working hard on lots of stuff. Yes, thank you GW for sending that. Obviously, yeah, we got the Raptodons painted up. I got the new Ashleth there and working on the new Slan and some of the other yep, stuff. Yeah, so. and then we got a bunch of Croxador, also some from Warpfire, thank you Jordan, yes. coming down the pipeline. So yeah, there'll be lots. A new Seraphon set to show off in awesome the next couple models. weeks. Awesome models, awesome models. Yeah. But then, as mentioned, to face off against them, our channel members uh, did vote for the Blades of Corn to face off against them. Yep. It's gonna be interesting. We know Corn is pretty good against magic, but Seraphon's still strong, so it's gonna be an interesting dynamic. And yep. there's still, you got a lot of self buffs. You don't necessarily have to be offensive with your spells, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, with, it is a five up, so yeah. it's like, yeah. Board control and everything, Seraphon's still a great army, so it'll mm -hmm. be interesting to see how this plays out. Yes. But the mission we're playing today is every step forward. So on this one, uh, you're rewarded if you're aggressive. So if you are uh, making a charge move in that turn, mm -hmm. that unit counts as, like, each model in that unit counts as an okay. extra body yeah. uh, for contesting objectives. And if you make a retreat move, you actually can't contest objectives for that turn. So it makes a very interesting dynamic for, um, you know, obviously being aggressive or, or whatnot and like playing the objective game. Um, it's normal, hold one, two more scoring on this. So. Yeah, keeping it in the back of your head is gonna be the thing, right? Yes. We gotta remember that. Because yeah. a lot of the time you, you wanna retreat to hold a point, things like that. Yeah. Like, so it's pretty wacky. Yeah, cool. it's a little different, but I'm excited to see how it plays out in this one. But Ridge, do you want to jump into your uh, Seraphon list to start off? Yes, so we're playing a Dractail list today. Uh, it's going to be, the Slan is obviously going to be the general, just way too good not to be. He's got the uh, two CCP for, for casting, yeah. and I did run the Space Holder Stave again, just to, to teleport outside of seven, just very, very good as well. Um, I have the grand strategy that to keep him alive, because again, it's just very strong having yep. Source Guard. Uh, so it's him, we got Croak, we have uh, a Star Seer with Blizzard, we have a Star Priest with Horfrost, and then we have the Ashleth Bear. So pretty classic loadout, um, but bringing both the Seer and the, the Star Priest. Uh, and then for Battle Line, we got two units of 10 Skinks, uh, we have two units of five Source Guard, and then we got the five Rapidon Chargers, we have a Snake Bastilladon, and then we have the Malevolent Maelstrom, who Seraphon can abuse yeah. quite well, and uh, the Geminids. So two of the new just like amazing spells. Uh, might not be as impactful here with you playing Corn, so it's gonna come down to how much I wanna actually cast. Take it. risks and whatnot. But yeah, still very strong. Um, and then I have two units actually up in, in the sky right now, which are, yeah, the Skinks and the Guard. Nice. Yeah. Well, looking at my army, I'm playing Skullfiend Tribe. I'm working on getting the Blood Warriors uh, painted up right now, but was too excited not to run a big 20 <laughs> block of them. Yeah. So I've got the 20 Blood Warriors. I've got two units of 10 Reavers to fill out my battle line, and then two units of Flesh Hounds and a unit of three uh, Mighty Skull Crushers. Yeah. Then obviously playing a ton of heroes because it's corn, though it didn't match out tonight. But in the list, I have a Blood Secrator, I have a Slaughter Priest, I have a Realm Door Ritualist, and then Scarbrand. And then wrapping it all up is my General, uh, the Bloodthirster of Unfettered Fury. Mm -hmm. He's got the command trait to make him a wizard. He's got the Halo of Blood to make him fight first. Yep. So between that and Skullfiend Tribe, I could be fighting first in a couple places, could be fun. And you have the Prayer Enhancement. Yeah, anything? Prayer Enhancement, so all my priests know an extra prayer. Though yep. I don't have any invitations tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I've often run a bunch, but here wanted to put the extra Blood Warriors in. We're gonna see obviously a little bit of a different play style. There's so many good prayers in Corn that I want to be chanting anyways, so yeah. I often wasn't chanting the, using the ritual as much to begin with. The MSU is, is the way to go with Corn, I think. Yeah. More small malt, more small units is very, very good. That's yes. kind of the thing. Yeah, for sure. And with my list, I was actually a five drop here. Ridge, yeah. you came in just under at four. Just barely, yep. Yeah, so it's gonna give you a choice of who goes first. Yeah, I'm gonna give give you the turn here. Okay. Uh, yeah. Cool, the classic, <laughs> give it away, play for the double. Yes. But we'll jump into Blades of Corn, turn one. Sounds good. 
Abhorring the magic of the Lizardmen, the Blades of Corn battle tactic is surround and destroy. The Bloodthirster and Slan both use heroic leadership. The Slaughter Priest chants for killer instinct on the Flesh Hounds, and the Ritualist chants for bronzed flesh on the Blood Warriors. The Bloodthirster fails his chant for unholy flames. Looking to secure the battle tactic, the Flesh Hounds use at the double. The Bloodthirster uses Beck in the Hunt on the Blood Warriors, who make an epic charge to engage their enemy. Lord Croak's Golden Death Mask makes the Blood Warriors strike last, but with Blood Craze Berserkers, they still get to activate first. Engaging the Saurus Guards, the Blood Warriors only manage to deal two damage. The Saurus Guards retaliate, but deal no damage at all. Also drawn into the fight, the Astralith Bearer deals three damage to the Blood Warriors. Taking the fight to the Arcane Amphibians, the Blades of Corn complete their battle tactic and score five points. All right, Blades of Corn turn one, and I made a big charge with my 3d6. This is the main story. You need a 13 um, and got it. need a 13, rolled a 13 on the 3d6. And there's a couple interactions here that were actually neat. Um, mm -hmm. Croak has the gold mask to make a unit fight last. You yeah. rolled, you met my bravery, which means you made me fight last, but Stroll Fiend Tribe makes me fight first. Yes. Balanced out, fight normal activation, I did first choice. Yep. I mean, it really didn't matter, so we did almost no damage. There were three total wounds yes. between four units in combat yeah, dealt, and, and they with, were all dealt to me. Without the GV, like they used, you see people run them in, when you could do GV, because yeah. then it's way more attacks, but yeah, you're just, there's not enough front inch with 32s. Yeah. One it, inch attacks. Exactly. So um, it's, uh, I, again, but again, I'm not super confident with Corn yet. I haven't played a ton of games, so I'm still learning the army. And the 20 block might not make the most sense anymore in this edition. Who knows? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm super fearing a Gemnids. Just going to rely on my Spell of Norris to, <laughs> to, to roll keep the five around. up. Yeah, yeah. But I do have uh, Bronze Flesh on them, so they're on a two up save. Yeah. They're super tanky. Uh, I tied up the skinks, I tied up a bunch of units, so mm -hmm. just to kind of annoy you and mess with you. Already interesting, because I can't retreat and get that point. <laughs> yes, yeah. But you could stay in common, pile on, risking taking damage, battle shock, all that stuff. Exactly, yep. Um, for battle tactics, though, actually notable for Torn, taking a rid uh, page out of Ridge's book last guy last time, yep. put the flesh hounds on the edge of the board so I could kill her instinct one, auto run the other, and yep. get my objective because not great options, turn one. Corn is tough, yeah. You need yeah. to always be thinking of that. So that's yeah. a good one, yep. Yeah, so here, um, trying to play the board early, give you a big block of wounds to deal with, um, and hopefully you have some trouble dealing with it or it slows you for a little bit. Yeah. And that's, yeah, basically where we're at, and we'll jump into Seraphon, turn one. You got there, let's go. <laughs> Unwavering in their focus, the Seraphon battle tactic is cold-blooded resilience. The Slan teleports Croak using Lords of Space and Time, while the Bloodthirster uses heroic leadership. The Realm Shaper engine's power unleashed deals a total of five mortal wounds. The Slan uses Gift from the Heavens on the Basiladon, then casts Stellar Tempest, dealing seven mortals to the Blood Warriors, who in turn deal five mortals to the Saurus Guard with their murder rolls. The Starseer casts an Arcane Bolt, then casts Merciless Blizzard, but the Blood Warriors ignore it. The Star Priest casts Hoarfrost on the Raptodon Chargers and blesses them with his Serpent Staff. The Slan casts Comet's Call and deals six mortal wounds, though it's ignored by the Slaughter Priest. The Slan then casts Mystic Shield on the Bastilladon, but miscasts Shield of the Old Ones. Lord Croak casts the Malevolent Maelstrom and casts Teapox Beneficence on the Raptodons, but his Celestial Deliverance is ignored by the Blood Reavers.
the slan uses at the double. More Saurus Guard and Skinks deep strike onto the battlefield, then the Seraphon summon a spawn of Kotek. The spawn of Kotek attacks the Blood Warriors, dealing two damage. The Bastilladon roars the Blood Warriors. The Raptodons use the Inspired Triumph and deal 12 damage to the Blood Warriors, who reflect two mortals and deal three mortals to finish off the Saurus Guard with their murder rolls. The Blood Warriors then retaliate but deal no damage. The Bastilodon deals two damage to the Blood Warriors, but suffers three mortals in return. Blood crazed and eager to fight on, the Blood Warriors use Inspiring Presence. Staggered by the ferocity of the demon worshippers, the Seraphon fail their battle tactic and score just two points. Alrighty, so back from Seraphon turn one. A um, couple things happened, a <laughs> couple things uh, ignored. Seeing the early effects of Korn having the five up spell ignore, yep. pretty big. Um, so I did, started off with Stellar Tempest, did like seven or so mortals, which was great to them, didn't roll it. Then I immediately went for the Blizzard, which uh, I rolled, just got there barely for 12. Before that, we ended up, you ended up using your primals to try to yes. unbind the Stellar Tempest. I rolled five, four dice to your two and we tied. Because I think I rolled with my pluses, yeah, that's 12 yeah, yeah. or something, and you added up to tying it. So then I was like, okay, I have four primal dice here and you have none. Yep. Um, but then uh, you rolled the five up on the blizzard, yep. which the- Ignored the blizzard. Saved their lives. Ignored the on the Stellar Tempest. I didn't do it right away, um, but remember to roll the murder rolls. Yes. Did a bunch of mortals to the guard. Yes. In the end, it mattered. It was huge because I took Cold Blood Resilience, which is an amazing Seraphon one where I just don't, I can't retreat with the Saurus Guard or a Saurus or Croxagore unit. Yeah, and they have to live. And they just have to live. Which here, I'm like, I'll for sure kill them. And then I'll just, they're gonna live and I'll get my tactic, super easy. Forgetting completely about the murder rolls plus the sixes to save also reflecting, yep. which you rolled some of those too. Yep. So it ended up after filling the blizzard, I, and one other spell, I can't remember, you got another one and then it gets to the point where it's like, okay, do I keep trying yeah. to do damage? Cause the five of the it blood the Thomas Call with the Slaughter Priest. Yes, and I got a couple here and yep. in the terrain. So. Notably, you have two heroes limping. So, yes. so it's like, you're still trying to push through the damage. Yeah. And you, like, it's still gonna hurt me and take out my pieces. For sure. And so I think you got, three total of yep. the five up spells north, which is, even that's like, now you're at four blood tithe. So I chose to go for the maelstrom instead of doing geminids, cause I just made an error where I, I only had croak left to cast. Yep. So I was gonna do geminids to turn there off, but then Jordan made a good point after he would have had two blood tithe then. He said he, he would have just auto- Unbound geminids. Unbound geminids. Yep. So me going for the maelstrom actually ended up kind of benefiting me cause now I'm gonna be able to just Yeah, you could kill two heroes. If I dispel, pop it in your turn, yep. yeah. Which again though, is more blood died for you. So yeah. I wasn't able to take them down. Uh, I rolled Hoarfrost, I rolled the, the three. So it was a D2 yep. on a D3. I went for the twos to hit because they hit on fours. Maybe I should have went for the two rend with you having Mystic Shield. Um, I, I did like eight or so damage with them. So like they were Hoarfrost and the sixes to wound an additional mortal. So like the Raptor on Chargers, that's, oh, yeah. that's their best two buffs. And then the Basilodon, you made a ton of uh, big saves. So yeah, I, I just wasn't able to kill the, the Blood Warriors. I went for the Spawn of Chotek Summon because I just painted them up. And I'm like, <laughs> I, have, I just want to do it now. Yeah. Instead of Cleanse the Realms or whatever, I might do that later, but went for that because I wanted to see the-, the Yeah, you're the not really boy. in a position to like do crazy I'm, damage with Cleanse the Realms. And I'm somewhat safe. So I was like, yeah. if I'm going to summon one, this is the time I'm yeah. going to do. Yeah. And then if I win, I can, you know, go shoot them. So it's not all yeah. bad him being there. They, so. yeah. But the big thing was, yeah, denying my tactic is massive. I yep. just, I just. Especially because you couldn't get hold more here, so. Yeah, the murder rolls just, yep. ugh. Yep, it will put us in a. They hurt. Uh, change your spot for the I'm turn going. two priority. I got all the slant. Got die. the corn red here. Against the slant. That's no. a six, doesn't even matter. Oh. To Ridge is five. 
I like this addition where we've been a little more even on the prior rolls. Yes. Yeah, it's been I feeling agree. good. I agree. Yeah. Although I want to win them all, I agree it is better. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll jump into Blades of Corn turn two. Let's do it. Eager to continue their rampage, the Blades of Corn battle tactic is intimidate the invaders. The Blood Secrator heroically recovers one wound while the Slan fails. The Slan dispels the malevolent maelstrom, dealing two mortals to the Skull Crushers and killing the Ritualist, but is ignored by three units. The Slaughter Priest chants for Killer Instinct on Scarbrand, while the Bloodthirster fails Unholy Flames. Exalting in their mounting blood tithe, the Blades of Corn are rewarded with Rising Hatred. Terrified by the stampeding Skull Crushers, the Skinks redeploy and move six inches. Rushing to support the Blood Warriors, the Blood Secrator uses at the double. The Bloodthirster cracks his lash and kills one skink. Scarbrand uses forward to victory and makes his charge. Scarbrand fails his roar, though the Bastilladon roars him in return. Scarbrand deals eight damage to the Bastilladon, leaving him alive with one wound left. The Bastilladon piles in and attacks, dealing a massive nine damage to Scarbrand. Tagged by the Bastilladon, the Blood Warriors pile in, but only deal a wound to the Raptodons. Stumbling after their early success, the Blades of Corn fail their battle tactic and score just two points. Blades of Corn turn two was great to get the turn, but not really an effective turn in terms of what I wanted to do. Now, I've set myself up in a pretty good position because I spent my Blood Tithe point to get the five up uh, spell ignore down to a four up spell ignore, also generating blood so tithe. The maelstrom we should talk about <laughs> yeah. in the beginning. So it procced uh, what five units yeah. and you rolled three of the five up. So that put you, Jordan to eight blood tithe right away. Yeah. So in the end, the maelstrom for just killing that single guy and not killing him killed the ritualist, but you it's, really wanted the blood secretor down. Yes. Because he was, as we saw, I set up to rally guys back. Yeah. But because I left the basilidon on one wound, somehow he, uh, he tagged the blood warriors. So I'm like, okay, I'll pile the Blood Warriors in, try and finish him. I at least kill the Raptodon. Tagging the Raptodons, giving you the, the, the conundrum of, okay, do you pile in, get some more damage on the Blood Warriors? Yes. But then that would trigger murder rolls. And then it could kill the Bastilladon, which I cho chose not to. Yeah. You just killed the one guy with one wound, so yeah. then I was outside of one with everything, so I didn't have to attack, which is what I, did, yes. I didn't attack here. No, like, I'm tied up in combat, so I'm not rallying, yeah. is, is kind of the main thing, but I mean, you, I killed a guy, you don't want to attack. It's, yeah. it's not the worst and thing And you had either. a 4-up spell yeah. ignore now, which all my damage is Because magic, the Raptorons so. are like a big damage source and they're dead. Yes. Or I, not dead, they're tied up and... I don't have very many yeah. other big sources, um, yes. But again, I don't have a lot going on otherwise. I was about two inches out with the Bloodthirster from his charge over here. I rolled yep. an 8, needed to get over the terrain, um, and I couldn't. So yep. I probably needed a, a 9 or 10. Yeah. Battle tactic that Ridge has pointed to, I went for um, having more units outside my territory, intimidate the invaders, yes. thinking I just need to roll a two to yeah. run with the Reavers and I automatically get my battle tactic. Yes. As long as I made my charge with Scarbrand. Which you did. Uh, yeah. But I rolled the one with the Reavers. And I was... theoretically could have done at the double to guarantee it, yes. but I, I took the risk because I wanted to use the auto run to get myself in the rally range that would have brought back six blood warriors had I not killed the Bastilla on and turn. got tagged. Yeah, you the start wanted of to your save turn. the auto six exactly because that's so, huge. The four up rally on them is massive. Yeah, which was part of the plan. But yeah. and then as soon as you when you move these guys, I rolled the uh, yeah you roll two dice because they're skinks because the skinks on and the then redeploy they got the six redeploy. Yeah. So that which, was an eleven inch charge. Yeah, which, and in hindsight, even like. Thinking it through, there was a couple different things. I set the the thirster to try and get in here. Yeah. Maybe pile around. That's even a risk. I could have done two other things. One, I ran the blood reavers first to try and get them out of the way. Yeah. But they couldn't stay in the territory and leave room the for Starbrand to charge. Yes. Yeah. So I ended up just moving them in the corner. Now I had already rolled a run. 
I should have put them around this edge, used the 3D stitch charge to send them that way. Mm -hmm. Um, that could have potentially killed the stains, got me that objective, got me that. So a, a couple little mistakes here. Yeah. Um, hopefully the, the four of uh, Svelinord carries me through. You have a lot of um, units still. I dropped, which is... I dropped a bunch of points that I, you know, the battle tactic at least should have been One in the points. tactic, yeah. yeah. But you have a lot of units still and that's corn, like, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, I'm, all my so, damage is spells, so. Yeah, so we're, I mean, I'm not, not out of it by any means, though. No, no, no. Getting that bestilled on living with one wound. It's been the bane of my existence in, re existence in recent games. <laughs> Dealt nine damage to Starbrand. Yeah, so, him, just the bestilled on yeah. was glorious. Yeah, that was... Uh, Ready to take him anything out. Anything but. But <laughs> that is where we are after uh, Blades of Corn turn two, and that'll yep. lead us right into Seraphon turn two. Let's go. Ready to bring their celestial magic to bear, the Seraphon battle tactic is led into the Maelstrom. The Slan uses Lords of Space and Time to teleport the Starseer, and the Blood Secretor fails heroic recovery. The Slan casts Celestial Equilibrium, Shield of the Old Ones, and Mystic Shield on Croak, but then Comet's Call is ignored by the Blood Secretor. The Star Priest casts Hoarfrost on the Raptodons, and blesses them with his Serpent Staff. The Seraphon use Cleanse the Realms and deal 27 mortals to the Blades of Corn, though the Bastilladon is slain from the Murder Rolls. The Starseer casts an Arcane Bolt, but Merciless Blizzard is ignored by the Fleshhounds. The Realm Shaper's Power Unleashed deals 3 mortal wounds to the Bloodthirster. Croak casts Tepok's Beneficence on the Raptodons, then casts the Geminids of Ulgish. As desperation begins to creep in, the Blades of Corn spend five Blood Tithe for Rising Hatred. The spawn of Kotex shoots at Scarbrand but deals no damage and is unable to finish him off. Desperate to survive, Scarbrand stomps the Astrolith Bearer. The Astrolith Bearer uses all out attack and takes down Scarbrand. The Blood Warriors fight next and deal 3 damage to the Astrolith Bear. The Saurus Guards deal 4 damage to the Skull Crushers, who deal 1 wound in retaliation. Fighting next, the Skinks deal 4 damage to the Flesh Hounds. Lord Croak takes down the last Skull Crusher, and three Blood Reavers flee from Battleshock. Showing their strength is not limited to the Arcane, the Seraphon complete their battle tactic and score 5 points. All right, so we're back from Seraphon turn two. Uh, I honestly did not think the board was gonna look like this, like so spread out. As yeah, yeah. My, I kind of got a little loose once I got going because I just wasn't able to finish off all the units that I wanted to. Um, I kind of had the play of teleporting him and then cleansing the realms in the back of my head. Like that was gonna be- So good. Oh, ridiculous. And obviously I'm not doing damage through- It's a spell, spells. so it's like, Seraphon is a spell casting army. I have, yes. even with his spell ignore, it's like you still have you can still put damage out. Yes, and that's the main source. Like, yes. What did I do? 27, 27. mortal wounds. Yes. Yeah. So you're able to just move around your nodes and then w if I didn't have that against this army, because I didn't cast with Croak, I haven't even cast Celestial Deliverance, because yeah. I you've rolled this another couple to. and it's just like how yeah. much blood tithe 
I've tried to kill this little Sigrader like yeah. multiple times. Um, and then I rolled the big six on Scarbrand, which was huge. Well, yeah, but after he took those nine on your turn. Yeah, like, yeah. so what or you can do, turn. playing Seraphon, I, I started to cast spells until I knew I could get to that 15. When I hit that 15, then I cleanse the realms. Because yeah. And then you can save some spells to do after, because say I don't kill him with a Comet, I can hit him yeah. with something else. If yeah. I didn't kill Scarborough with that, I then, he had one wound left, I'm like, okay, now I activate the Realm Shaper to take that last wound, but I rolled the one. Yeah. So then I had to try to finish him off in shooting, which I couldn't do, so the Astralith Bear had to... What is, like, he step would up. have survived here if not for the big charge yes i rolled an 11 i think it was yeah. with that and if piling, you make an eight and a pile in seven, it's probably enough yeah something like that yeah. but he rolled the 11 so i'm like i was already playing loose i already made the charge here i'm like i gotta yeah. go now so he took the scarbrand down and then it was just a bunch of little pile away so this doesn't get hit pile away yeah. so this doesn't get didn't think i was gonna get this point but it's like ridge don't be a dumb dumb we miss dumb little rules with this battle plan if you charge, you count as an extra model. Yes. For each of them. So I actually- so that, that flipped it. I will actually take this point and yep. that's gonna get me more. And yep. then with Maelstrom as well, I was I was thinking that I wasn't gonna be able to deal with the Blood Warriors, even if the Rapidons were to get in, but you just smartly piled them out. Yeah. And then now, um, I guess they're free, but. Well, this, I've still got an Ashleth Bearer, so I still am looking for priority so that I can kill the Ashleth, take free them up and rally them back following turns because yes. now we can see here like I, I've ignored a bunch of your spells so I've limited your damage I've generated a bunch of blood tithe yes correct tons was it like I spent them again to get the three up spell ignore now it's to, a three up spell ignore now it like really makes you think even, like oh, every time it makes even you the think. four up I was like oh yeah. and now it's a three up but like, but was that 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 to me, I was indecisive on that play, and now that it's could like, be twenty blood letters. Yeah, like that's or what, ten blood letters there. At least for, the first one for sure you do to get to the four. To up. four up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I need the three up? I don't know. We'll yeah. see how the game pans out. But I, I, I could regret. You those did blood roll tithe. when you got to four up. You did roll the four, which yep. is right because it was yep. if it was oh, a five up, he'd be dead for sure. I mean. Again, you I for sure go for the four. Yeah. Is it You're worth it to go to the three? For the three, or yeah. just summon blood wars. Or, 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 or wait for three more, get a bloodthirster, like yeah. or different, blood, different I think options. Blood letters is still always the yeah. summon. But there's so many other things. There's so you could meteor to deny tactic. Like yeah. that's what corn is one of my favorite armies. Yeah, I am on two blood tithe right now because of the units you killed that's this right. turn. Yes. Um the Reaver is actually past battle shot or enough stayed around. To so. two left, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's and same with the flesh hounds over here. So, um, yeah, it's I guess it's gonna be a dicey. Oh, I was hoping you were gonna say that. I'm like, don't game. say dicey because I'm reaching for the wicked dice. All right, you gotta grab it now. Oh, All right, let's go. Come it's on. a priority my, for round three. My Boston brethren. That's a one this time. They got it for me. Come on. Well. All right. Let's see. Uh, Going to Seraphon. Yeah. I think turn I three. It. Let's go. Showcasing the depth of their power, the Seraphon battle tactic is surround and destroy. The Slan heroically recovers two wounds and the Blood Secretor recovers three. The Seraphon rally and one Raptodon returns to the battle. The Slan casts Celestial Equilibrium and Shield of the Old Ones. The Seraphon again use Cleanse the Realms, dealing 22 mortal wounds this time. The Star Seer uses Scry the Stars on the Raptodons, the Astrolith Bear, and the Saurus Guard. The Slan then casts the Malevolent Maelstrom. Croak casts Teapok's Beneficence on the Skinks, Mystic Shield on the Saurus Guards, and an Arcane Bolt. The Star Priest casts Hoarfrost on the Raptodons and blesses them with his Serpent Staff. The Star Seer fails to cast Merciless Blizzard, then Croak casts Drain Magic to dispel the Geminids. Korn's Brass Skull Meteor deals three mortal wounds to the Slan. The Spawn of Kotex shoots and deals two damage to the Flesh Hounds. The Raptodon attack and finish off the Blood Warriors, but suffer two mortals in return, and the Astrolith Bearer goes down from the murder rolls. The 
Saurus Guard fight next and take out the Flesh Hounds. The spawn of Kotak and Fleshhound both fail to deal any damage. Continuing to devastate the Cornate Force, the Seraphon complete their battle tactic and score five points. Okay, so back from Seraphon turn three. Uh, yeah. Didn't need to cast an offensive spell. No, just kind of went with all the summoning points again, uh, yeah. just to get to cleanse the realms. Surprise. And then. A double turn and 50 mortal realms. With 50, the, 50 don't mortal need, realms. Don't need, oh sorry, mortal <laughs> wounds. You don't need offensive spells when you can do 50 mortal wounds with abilities. Yes. Or an ability. Um, that is a bonus free one because yeah. you just are casting spells. That ability is pretty good for 15 <laughs> CPP. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I could have. The other, th I was thinking about maybe taking, I rallied one back, which was funny. And I was thinking about going around there and taking out the Bloodthirster, but I figured just take out the Blood Warriors, then you can't four up rally. You know, because the Blood Secretor healed and then lived. Again, I couldn't get him. Yeah. Rolled the one on the to, for damage against him. But you got the Blood Warriors. Though. Yeah. Though they did take down the, the Ashley Ash with them. Yeah, and I did the little cheeky ability from the Star Seer to give five up wards, so. Yeah. Yeah, I was hoping they would kind of survive. Everything else just kind of moved over here and just, yeah. I think that prio was obviously massive. If you would have won that, then it would have been. It was still a tough spot for me. I had a lot of work to do, but had I won it. Yeah, but, but having um, the three of spell in the gate, getting the Bloodthirster in, pulling the warriors out again, rallying, like, yeah. it would have been. Thing to know too, talking about Cleanse Realms, you could have also done it turn one and chose not to. Yes. You might not have been, you would have at that point had to risk something with the teleport because mm -hmm. you probably would have been, no, I guess you, yeah, you wouldn't have been hitting much with it. No, that's, and I pulled in the spawn of Kotek because he actually does done a little bit of damage. Yeah, he's fought, you know, a battle line unit for an objective and held it. And held it with eight, although funnily enough, I had to retreat to get my surround and destroy tactic yeah, so and the, he only counts as one model. Well, two, because he's more than five wounds, but. Oh, that's right. He counts as two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I would still hold that. But, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not much to play for here. And I knew kind of looking at the turn it set up I, as your hero phase progressed, mm -hmm. basically expecting this. Honestly, I was surprised to actually have even those units survive. I was hoping for a little more blood tithe, but mm -hmm. um, so I ended up spending my three blood tithe to go for the meteor on the slant, trying to kill him in the game because that would actually deny your grand strategy and score mine. Yes. Because you um, run to, well, no, you would need to kill the wizards. No, no, I chose the one of kill, oh, that's kill right. a hero. And kill a hero, chose, and I chose the slant. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, we're gonna just kind of talk through my turn and the things. Like, I, I'm gonna be able to kill these guys, take this, you know, claim this objective. Yeah. Maybe I claim it even, and I can send him over here, go for the objective, um, the battle tactic to kill unit mm -hmm. um, of eight or more models. Right. Yeah, you could do that. So. Although um, I would have a redeploy with 2d6. Shh, shh. <laughs> we're gonna pretend that doesn't happen. I'll spend, <laughs> at the end of my hero phase, again, we're just kind of quickly going through it, because yeah, yeah, there's yeah. not much to play for. Yep. Um, you would have a heroic recovery on the slam. Yes. Um, if you do that. <laughs> if I do that. Yeah. Uh, yes. On a nine. Just one. I believe okay. he actually is nine. Cause... Okay, that's fine. Um, so I'm gonna go for the meteor at the end of my hero phase. Yeah, he is nine. For just two mortal wounds. Because it's on a five up, right? Yeah. So two, so he's taken five. He's got four left. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't, yeah. So yeah, there's he's got four left. Um, the best case scenario, again, maybe I take two objectives, yeah, get the two. battle tactic, four points. So you run him on, take the objective, kill them. You get hold two. Yeah. So you would get one, two. So I get four, four points, points here, yeah. potentially. Um, Skanks are gone. Yeah, we can roll a quick prio. Yeah. A one. Five. Five, and it's game over there. There you go. Um, the the Bloodthirster's limping with like seven wounds left. You can, at this point, I mean, not that you can teleport, but I'm over, it's just not enough. You have yeah. the Raptodons. I would just take that with Skink Unit. Yeah, and well, Tactic even here, the now. Raptodons are gonna c c come finish off the, the Bloodthirster. Yep. yep. So, yeah, um, you know, kind of a quick resolution there, but there's just like, not much in the grand scheme of things, Seraphone is also great at playing the mission, right? So, yeah. so coming into this, we know that I have the spell ignore could be crippling. Mm -hmm. As we saw, you do still have some combat and shooting damage, mostly combat here because of the, the skink loadout. Yep. You don't have a lot of shooting. No. But cleanse of the realms, it's just that all is, you need. Oh yeah, over everything. 50 mortal wounds on a double. Yeah. 
over everything. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. No, there were a little th few things that could have gone my way. Like, you know, I could have more points of if I roll a two up on a run. Yep. Starbrand could have been alive if on he, my turn three. A lot of small things that if it went well, yeah. but you also probably rolled better than a, five above average. for your spell yep. ignore. Yep. So, so, which is a good showing that like even with over average spell ignore, that cleanse the realms and just teleporting. And, and that's what we wanted still, to test here. And to like, show that. You know, the, the automatic you know assumption is that the spell ignore is going to be crippling. Yes. Um, but the blood tithe, Again, maybe that second turn, I said it earlier, or the second spending of, uh, on um, the extra... The five points there yeah. could have been more summoning. Could have been. I could have then had a bloodthirster or something. Yeah. Or 20 blood letters. That's the summon for yeah. 10. If I save it in this turn, I could have brought in 20 blood letters. Which is huge. Plus one yeah. to charge, you know. Yeah. So, so I think going for that three up wasn't the play. Yeah. You're already a, a, avoiding spell casting to a large degree. Yeah. So unless you're in a really comfortable spot and then you can get the three up, but yeah. if you, you but need more units. I was also in a point where I'm potentially facing a double. Yeah. You won the double. The two to three double was 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 big. So maybe yeah. like that then you didn't bother casting any offensive spells yeah. now in hindsight you didn't need them. No. Yeah. Even from the beginning, but in the beginning I was yeah. getting a little spicy. I was trying to like it was just picking things off, right? And it just yeah. wasn't going my way. Yep. But in the end it didn't matter. Yeah, it, the blood tithe generation with the spell ignore isn't enough to overcome yeah. the, the mortal wound output of for sure. Fawn. And I think there's more definitely more optimized corn lists like for even, sure. even running the Bloodthirster Scar brand like and, and that's a note too. Yeah. If you have we don't have like, Skull Reapers, we don't have some of the, the units well, that are optimization they are sure in the list, but also Ridge you're extremely experienced with Seraphon. Yeah, that too. Skill largely is going to trump, you know, nine times out of ten or eight times, you know, four to five times. Yeah, familiarity with the army yeah. and playing it. So that. here, you know, a, again, a more experienced horn player with a better list could have done it, but this is yeah. like, you know, if like an average player, mm -hmm. I, if I'm an average player with corn, like Seraphon is still rack train, oh, right? For like, sure, yeah. It's just, so. it is just crazy. The amount of mortal wounds. It's just all the sequencing is what, and it takes, you know, a, a bit to get yeah. used to it, but all the sequencing when you do spells, then when you unleash, when you do, you know, certain things in, in the yeah. different order is, is is something. And it's not like it's crazy hard to do this, like to just, yeah. hey, building mortal wounds. I'm not yeah. saying that at all, but yeah. it is somewhat similar to being able to teleport and do all the hero phase shenanigans. And yes. There's still a lot of tricks there's, that you can do. There's like, it's a high ceiling, like, yeah. Like you can, yeah. Cleanse the Realms isn't a tough one, no. but, but positioning is a skill yes. and, and sequencing and all that. Especially against Corn, yeah. because Corn can, and there's a lot of times you probably could have done some things well, uh, in between with and that Corn. The thing really I'm really at. like... Dropping that tactic turn two was... You know what, the tactic, yeah, that was a, a two up. I could have used Murder Lust at that point anything, yeah. to guarantee it, but I'm like, yeah, it was... I also at that point knew I was dependent on a big charge with Starbrand. Yeah. So I knew those those fail points. So I'm like, why spend the blood tithe if I could just fail it with Starbrand? Yeah. Yeah. In hindsight, obviously 2020. Mm -hmm. The the thing I'm like the the kind of point in this game that really was the turning point. The mortal wounds were obviously super strong. Mm -hmm. But that um, Bastilladon surviving dealing Sur nine damage to Starbrand. Because not only did it do that, it tied the Blood Warriors up. Otherwise, I'm bringing six Blood Warriors back. Yes. And at this point, with six Blood Warriors back, I probably would have killed the Raptodons nearly in combat here. Yeah. And been at a point where I can take two or three objectives and continue rallying them back. So it's literally because that blood, or sorry, the Bastildon surviving on yes. one wound. He had nine wounds, and which, you, you somehow I just didn't roll a one. Didn't I didn't roll plus one two on, save. Yeah, so I plus two my, save. Back my two I up. failed on Holy Flames for my to, um, for the extra rend, which extra rend, which three up, and then and I would have died. 100%. You would have died. Yeah. Do you also probably don't bother using the all out defense at that point? If I'm on a three with eight, no, you I think you put six or six yeah. of the eight through. But yeah, I still, I probably still would have just in case you have lots of CP. Change. Yeah, but, but but there's he would have been dead. For yes, sure. yeah. yeah. So lots of little things like, you know. One more murder roll into him. Yes. Like one that's more the thing that caught there. me off guard. I'm so used to playing demons. I play some of the mortals with corn. Yeah. But yeah, the murder rolls are, are well, spicy when you you because it's yes. just any unit within three. Like, yes. I and I good. really liked the blood warriors. I like yeah. 
We got we got twenty here. I on like like I want twenty more. So many. Cause well, we have like it's 60. different. <laughs> it's, well, no, that's we got lots of blood reavers. I got like two pack, ten packs at home. Oh like, well, yeah, look, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, but like at you know, going more into the the mortal side mm -hmm. again, kind of optimizing. Like there's a ton of value in those units. Like again. Poor sequencing and a little bad luck cost me the rally of bringing them back. Yeah. You know, but otherwise, like they're just an anvil now. Like yeah. they used to do some damage, but they well, don't. Well, I mean, they're do. they're still doing mortals. The, the six the, up on saves and then murder I mean. rolls they do and more then they rally back when they die, which is perfect. They, that's that's what you. That's awesome, right? Yeah. They're doing their job by dying and living again. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. No, it was uh, great to get to see that working. Um, and kind of get validation to my, like, I wasn't super confident in that turn one play, but mm -hmm. they ended up doing a great job. So, yeah, yeah, they were awesome, but um, that Basildon and Scarbrand kind of let me down. So that yes. hurts, but. Um, yeah, from this, from my perspective, just a super quick recap of trying some different units and whatnot. Uh, this is pretty similar to what you'll see, like a meta kind of yep. Starborn list, right? Very similar. This could easily yep. be, take this to a GT and do really well. Um, Everyone's playing the Incarnate now, like not everyone, mm -hmm. but there's so many lists that have done well. Like I know in England yeah. and even here, there's been some people that have played with the Incarnate. Uh, so strong, like yeah. very strong with doing all these mortals and all of this stuff still, still having something there. Um, I just don't love the Incarnate in general, yeah. like as to, to use it, but very, very good. And this kind of list just, like as you saw, just so yeah. many, imagine you didn't have a spell ignore, it would just be ridiculous. Like yeah. certain armies, oh, it's just like, obscene. you can see why it's just like oppressively yeah, good yeah. into if some I, armies. I was thinking of playing OBR at an event, I will 100% play no you know, Myriad if yes. I do. Like just that, like, giving you that just full defense against it yeah. is, is ridiculous. Yep. So yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It's, I guess it's still kind of fun, but Raptor to be fully honest, it's cool too. The Raptor like, are sweet, yeah. I like the portion of like summoning and like, movement and like actually playing the, the game and, and the and tactical yes, elements of that that's the part that I like. where you always have play on the mission and yeah whatnot. and i'm always like my brain's going like okay cool i can do this and then i'll do this and yeah. then i'm like and then i'll summon this and i'm like why would i do that i'm just gonna shuffle with this guy and then do I'm 30 cleanse, wounds. yeah i'm yeah. just gonna cleanse around like yeah. that's why i hate that it's like the one dimensional with the trog bomb is so similar yeah like that now the trog bomb is not there it's like okay well then you're just you're cleansing oh. the realms and casting blizzard and yeah you know it's that type of stuff which is whatever, that's the way the game is, has went and yeah. that's the way Seraphon <laughs> is, but I personally don't love that it's just that. That pow <laughs> that that powerful where it's like, it takes the str strategy out of it because that's yeah. the obvious only good or best option. Yeah, it's just yeah. the best way to get your, your damage. Yep, but so. here um, Seraphon, Mortal Wound output, still good. Still, yeah. Even, even through a spell the... ignore, yeah. still good, but still uh, nice. Again, I think Korn definitely had a chance in this match. Yeah, things were a little differently, and we would have had a lot, of, a lot of play and a lot more fun killing stinks. But <laughs> that's going to be it for us here today, though, guys. We hope you enjoyed that match, uh, whether you're on the side of Korn or Seraphon. But <laughs> either way, uh, let us know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out our channel membership if you want more content and to help support the channel. We super appreciate it, and we'll see you guys soon in another battle report. Have a good week, everyone. Okay, we literally just rolled it off camera and we still have the top down to prove it. Yes. <laughs> but I forgot, we, so with Pryo, Ridge would have gotten another heroic recovery on the slam. Yes, which I did and I would have had Recovered one. six left. I had to do six mortals with another meteor. I got exactly six. And I have no ward. Kill the slam. Yeah, I have no ward safe. I deny Ridge's grand strategy. Yeah, for a moral victory. Score my grand strategy. Yes. And we're happy. And then you die. And moral you victory for Torn. <laughs> All right. Just had to say it. Yeah, that's it. Later. <laughs>